Okay, welcome to test four in our 2019 series, The Edge and Economics Revision. This is a five question short video on market structures. Here are five questions and question one is on the way. What is implied by an observation that an industry is contestable? Press the pause button, have a go at the question and then come back to me when you want to go through it. Okay, the answer to question one is D. The key thing about a contestable market is that the, the presence of actual competition, firms already in the market, or indeed the threat of new firms coming into the market may well be sufficient for firms who have market power to not exploit this by charging high monopoly prices. Indeed, in a contestable market with low sunk costs, oftentimes the prices are charged are quite close to a highly competitive market because it's the threat of competition as well as actual competition which keeps firms from fully exploiting their market power. So the answer to question one is D. Let's take a look at question two. A firm changes its objective from profit maximization to producing at the allocatively efficient output. In which market structure must the firm operate for this to cause the least change in economic welfare? Have a go, please, at question two. So here's a change in objective from profit maximization to allocative efficiency. When will this lead to no change in welfare? The answer is D. It'll have no effect in a perfectly competitive market. The reason being that uh, the outputs of the two objectives are the same. Profit max, where MC meets MR. Allocative, allocative efficiency, where price equals marginal cost. Well, in perfect competition, price equals marginal revenue and obviously then marginal revenue equals marginal cost at the same output therefore there's no change in welfare in the others a b and c would expect prices to fall and output to go up which would have an effect on welfare here's question three an airline sell seat to 100 dollars three months before flight at 150 a month before the flight and at 200 dollars the day before the flight question is what type so what describes this type of market behavior by the firm? Have a go, please, at question number three. So what kind of pricing market behavior are we looking at in question three? The right answer is B, it's price discrimination. Typically, people who need to fly and need to book the day before have a price inelastic demand curve, a low coefficient of elasticity. Perhaps they need to fly for business. Airlines can exploit this by charging a high price to people who, who need to book right up to the last minute because travel is a necessity. Good example of price discrimination. Two more questions left on this little video. Here we go. Question four. Which of the following market structures is represented in the diagram below? Here's a chance to have a go at question number four. So the diagram shows falling average cost across the full range of output, marginal cost line below average cost. The market structure we'd associate with that diagram is a natural monopoly. Because it's in the nature of the industry, there are some significant economies of scale, and therefore the average cost is downward sloping across the full range of output. Well, you may have got four out of four. Let's see if you can get the full set. Here's question number five. There have been calls recently for the UK government to nationalise the railways. The question is, what would not be a justification or reason for nationalising the railways? Have a go, please, at question number five. So what did you get for the last question in this little set? The right answer is B. A, C and D are, in part, good justifications for considering state ownership. Prices charged by monopolies, uh, keeping essential infrastructure under state control. It's not, a B is right because the railways are not a public good. Public goods are non-rival and non-excludable. Well, if I buy a ticket for a railway service, that takes a ticket from somebody else, takes a seat from somebody else, so seats are rival. And in theory, hopefully, the free riders are not able to, uh, to travel. Those people are not willing to pay aren't, aren't able to travel. So in theory, Rail services are excludable. Therefore, railways should not be treated as a public good. 
There we go, a quick five question blast on market structures.